Hello, my friends. Thank you uh, for joining me once again. Today's poem is about the rat race. About living in a modern society such as this, that we, such as America. And the struggle. Uh, the, um, the day-to-day. The title of this poem is called The Drudgery of Day to Day. <clears throat> How vehemently we ponder our death. How flippantly we live our lives. Dredging up the routine. Are you late for this moment? Are you too early for yesterday's dreams? <clears throat> Dealing for dollars. Peddling away the hours of the day. With the system slinging its standards. Straddling both the predictable and the random. What sense does it make? Are the lies you will not acknowledge endangering your soul? Few in hell thought they would end up there. That really ends on a somber, dim note. (laughs) Uh, you know, I didn't really intend for it to, you know, just kind of where it ended up. I, when I write, I write stream of consciousness. So, like nine times out of ten, this stream of consciousness. This is this was a stream of consciousness poem. <clears throat> like most of my stuff. Um, so, most of the time, I don't really even know what I'm writing next until the words are being written on the paper. Like, I don't know the next line until I'm writing it. And half the time, I don't know the end of the sentence until I'm finished writing it. It just, boom, surfaces like a magic eight ball. Some call that automatic writing. I don't know. Call it what you will. It is what it is. A rose by any other name. But this poem... I'll do some analyzation with this one. How vehemently we ponder our death. Now, not everybody wants to sit around and think about shit, you know, when I die, you know, what, that, what that's going to be like. That's a big deal. That's some heavy, heavy things to ponder. <clears throat> but it's unavoidable. Um, as human beings, we have the rare curse of knowing that we're going to die, like, unlike all the other animals, you know. So, you know, it's inevitable that we will ponder our own death. What will be the nature of it? You know, what will happen after, of course. How flippantly we live our lives. Flippantly. Just without a, on a whim. Oftentimes, we live our lives like playing checkers, not chess. You know, we fall into that cause and effect. Uh, re- cause and effect reaction patterns where you don't consider the, str- the strategy and then respond based on you know some outlandish shit that just got thrown your way you just react boom and then the chain of suffering starts but if you can pull your ego out of that um, cause and effect reaction deal or like somebody comes up to you and is like, you're an asshole. You know, and you just feel like, well, you know, like, opinions vary, man. <laughs> like the dude would say, you know. <laughs> Rather than be like, oh, yeah, we'll tell with you. And then you punch him in the face, you know. <clears throat> That's playing checkers. You don't do that. It will not do any good for anybody. <laughs> it's going to make everything worse for everybody. But if you just say, well, you know, that's like your opinion, man, and you just move on and back away, then his attack was unsuccessful. Anyway, I'm getting on a tangent here. Dredging up the routine. Now, everyone can relate to that. Get up, go to work. It's the same shit. SSDD. Are you late for this moment? (laughs) Yeah, that's the essence of being late. Are you, like... You're in the moment, and you need to be somewhere else in this moment. So you're late for this moment. This moment is past. You're late. 
<laughs> now this is my favorite line in the poem. Are you too early for yesterday's dreams? Now what did I mean by that? Well, are you too early for your dreams? Like, your dreams, like, you're not in a position to make them come to fruition. Like, you don't have the leg up. Like, you have all the energy and the will, but no means of making it happen. Are you too early for yesterday's dreams? You know, so it's like, even your dream, forget about your dreams. Dreams are supposed to be a projection, like your future, like what you'd like in the future, you know. It's like you can't even you can't get a hold of your future dreams. You can't even get a hold of yesterday's dreams. Much less future dreams. That's kind of what I was saying with that. Dealing for dollars. Peddling away the hours of the day. You're selling away your life. Time periods of your life. You only have so much of it you're gonna be allowed to that you'll live. And you don't even know how long that's gonna be. But you're selling away moments of your life. For money. And a lot of times you end up selling your soul because you end up doing a bunch of evil shit for corporations. Or you get involved in politics. Very few who get involved in politics will, will, will escape hell. Because they all sell out and cause suffering. And that's the truth. Same thing goes for a lot of people in authority. You cause suffering unjustly, uh, you're going you're gonna to feel that suffering when you die. That's the way it works. With the system slinging its standards, yeah, they tell they'll give us our standards of living, what we're expected to believe. They want us to equate God and country as one and the same, as though um, God wouldn't let America be re led by evil or something. Well, America is being led by a mentally uh, mentally handicapped antichrist right now, Donald Trump. So that's bullshit. The system is bullshit. Its standards are bullshit. And they pacify us. Keep us fat and happy with nice gizmos like this phone I'm recording this shit on. But they also oppress us. And brainwash us. And convince us that spending 56% of our tax dollars on bombing people and shit is okay. When it's not okay. Fucking evil. And that's just the beginning. Don't get me started. Healthcare, all of it. Bernie Sanders is the way. Any other way, we're just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. I mean, that's the truth. It is what it is. Straddling both the predictable and the random. What sense does it make? And that's the nature of reality. You get, you get thrown a bunch of random stuff. And you get thrown a lot of predictable stuff. And you got to balance that out. Now, few are able to understand the connections between the random and the predictable. That there are connections. And if you can understand the connections and the correlations between the random and the predictable, you can better manifest your reality in ways that are, will serve you. It's, that's the part of the nature of becoming a master of your reality. Are the lies you will not acknowledge endangering your soul? Now, I already spoke one of the main lies I wish to expose, like I already mentioned. Equating both God and country is the same. It's not. It's not at all the same. Many of the laws of man and the ways of men and the ways of the world and the war, all that business, it's not the ways of God at all. Who would Jesus want to go to war with, right? Nobody. Much less would he want to go overseas to the Middle East. People have absolutely nothing to do with us. It's all for money. It's all for profit. It's all bullshit. It's bad for you, as George Carlin says. Few in hell thought they would end up there. Yep. Yep. Narrow is the road. Wide is the gates to hell. Narrow is the road to heaven. You can't serve the ways of the world and money and serve God. It's impossible. You can't have two masters. You either are ruled by compassion or you're ruled by self-interest. 
the two cannot can, can, the two cannot coexist. They cannot intermingle. They can. They they cannot. You have to be ruled by compassion. And in this new age, if you're not ruled by compassion, you'll be driven away. You ain't having it no more. So don't lose hope, my friends. Things are changing slowly, as always. But they will change. It may take five, ten years for things to get really like hardcore on track, where like where we need to be, like serious societal improvements, you know. But the great cataclysm, it's not gonna happen. It doesn't have to happen. We've transcended that. It's not even necessary. We're it's not necessary. So don't fear. We transcended the cataclysm. I feel that to be true, you know. Everybody's expecting the end of the world, you know. Since 2012, it's like everybody in the back of their mind, they're like, is it really going to happen? Is that going to happen? And everything's getting kind of weird. It's about to change dramatically. It's always darkest before the dawn. Don't, don't, don't get, be ruled by fear. That's what I'm saying. Don't be ruled by fear. Be ruled by compassion. Be ruled by joy. Be ruled by the interconnectivity of your family and the ones you love. Be ruled by the harmony of Gaia and nature. Be ruled by Jesus Christ and the message he had to say. Or by Buddha and the principles he gave forth. Go inside. Find your inner divinity. Look within. You don't have to go to church. Your body is your church. Your body is your temple. Your soul is in your body. The God particle is in your body. You are a, f a piece of God. You're a expression, a small, like a thought, like an expression, a fragment of God consciousness. We're all a part of the God consciousness. And we can connect with God anytime we wish. We don't need churches to do it. You just have to look within yourself. Easier said than done, I suppose. For some. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'll stop now. I hope you enjoyed my poem. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I'll keep posting them. Blessings to you. See you next time.